We've got the refreshed Acura RDX. This is always been the best value if you want a premium compact utility. Let's see if it still holds true. Ooh. Think about the Acura nice. RDX. It has some of the best power in this class. Yep. Andrea, what's under the hood? A two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine with a 10 speed automatic transmission. 272 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque. Standard all wheel drive in Canada. In the US, there's a front wheel drive and all wheel drive option on the lower trims, but standard all wheel drive on those two top trims. Acura recommends premium fuel for this RDX, but you can put regular fuel in it. The only other vehicles that have more power than this in this class are the Stelvio mm. from Alfa Romeo and the Genesis GV70 with the two and a half liter turbo. More on that coming up. Now the NX has got some good torque now though. Yeah, good torque, but this has more power. All right, uh, this is a nicely equipped vehicle. It is a premium brand. Andrea, what are the key standard features? The base trim comes with a 10 and a quarter inch display with true touchpad interface. Amazon Alexa is now integrated into the head unit, a 7-inch multi-information display, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, leatherette upholstery, 12-way power driver and front passenger seat, driver seat memory and side mirrors, heated front seats, a heated steering wheel, a panoramic sunroof, power tailgate, and jewel-eye LED headlights and LED taillights. Ah, this is a refreshed 2022 model. It sure is. But they didn't change the push button transmission. So <laughs> what are we gonna put it in? Well, you gotta put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review, twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, that's a big deal. And also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to get a sneak peek what's going on behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below. This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of two-year door delivery and the confidence of a seven-day love it or return it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more. So we're going to talk about the handling and any changes that happen with this vehicle. Nothing really. Uh, most of the changes were cosmetic. On the outside, I like the way it looks. This certainly has an MDX vibe to it. They've definitely incorporated some features from the big brother. The front grille has been tweaked a little bit. The surround, which is chrome or in our A-spec model, high gloss black, is a little bit thinner now. I like the headlamps. They certainly look good. Yeah. And the back, thankfully, they have real exhaust tips, especially on this A-spec. And I'm not a huge fan of dark wheels, but I think yeah. with this color combo on the A-spec, it kind of works. The rear gets an updated fascia and the A-spec exhaust pipes are round. All other trims get rectangular, standard 19 inch wheels and 20 inch on the higher trims. So we're gonna to touch on this again in questions, coffee and cars, but this particular model, the A-spec is now Thank you, Acura. Available with the adaptive dampers. We have it on this car, and I think it makes a world of difference. I agree. When you pop it in sport mode, it's much more responsive, but in comfort mode, it creates this comfortable drive. For those who can afford that system, it is well worth it, but it's only on that top trim. Now, is it just my imagination, or does this feel like it's more insulated than the old model. It is, Acura has tweaked it. They have reduced road noise, wind noise, and you're right, Zach, I feel that there's a big difference in here. There have been complaints that the RDX is a little bit loud. It is much better now. When you put it in sport mode, I think they maybe are, I don't know sure if the exhaust changes, but yeah. you definitely hear more of the engine note inside the cabin. It could be a little bit artificial. Should we try it? Yeah, let's put it in. Put it in sport uh, mode. Put it in sport and I hit okay, it. here we go. Wow, I like okay. the sound. All right, now let's do it. Let's just uh, let's just do it again. Okay, slow down. Yeah. I'm gonna put it in comfort. comfort. Okay, slow yeah. down a bit. Crazy over there with the lead <laughs> foot. Okay, uh, do it again. Little less. A little less. But yeah. it's still pumped in. Yeah, yeah, I think it's pumped in. All right, now we're gonna shift uh, to. Um, back into subscribe. Uh, what we're going to do is talk about the inside. Yeah. Now we were talking about this over coffee over the last few days 
this is a win when it comes oh. to comfort and a lose when it comes to some features. Yeah. Comfort, fantastic. These seats are so comfortable. The leg support is quite incredible in here and I can see on a long trip how much you would enjoy it. We were recently in the all new CX-50 and getting back into this, I realized that the seats are just not as comfortable in the Mazda, but better than the CX-5. So comfort in here is great. The seating position and the steering wheel and the oh. dash, it feels like a, like a sporty vehicle. They've done a really good job on all of that. I really like this flat bottom steering wheel that's in the A-Spec model. And when it comes to front row leg room, this is quite spacious. It's not best in class. It's the Lincoln Corsair that offers just over 43 inches, but this is at 42 inches of leg room space in the front row. Now, the other thing we want to touch on quickly is all of the soft materials that are utilized yeah. on the inside of this. So we have this because it's the A-Spec, the Alcantara, with the red stitching, the side bolstering on the center console here, and then you have the two-tone Alcantara with the red leather and Andrea. Extra bonus points to you for matching the leather jacket. Right? I'm not sure if you guys noticed that, <laughs> but there was a lot of effort went into this color combination. Not a lot of effort. I just went in my closet and pulled out my red jacket, but I thought it would be a nice matchup. I'm always impressed with the RDX for using very little hard plastic in their interiors, and this one is no different. All right, to the parts that are not so good. They have stuck with this push button transmission yeah. and the big dynamic mode in the middle of the dash, the thing you use the least yeah. is the largest thing on the dash. And below that is the frustrating <laughs> trackpad that you use to access the screen. It is frustrating. I am not a big fan of it. Could I get used to the button shifter because I really like the sporty drive of the RDX? I would suck it up, but this trackpad is enough to pull my hair out. New for 2022, wireless charger underneath. So that's definitely welcome. And also wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on all trims. All right, Andrea, what's the best value trim? It's the tech trim. This trim comes with a hands-free power liftgate, navigation, wireless charger, and the ELS Studio Premium audio system. Now, in the US, it's a little bit different. You get that hands-free power tailgate on the advanced model, but you do get a leather interior on the tech trim where we in Canada get leatherette. Some other features and trims you might be interested in, the A-Spec trim, it gets the power folding side mirrors, ventilated front seats, and the ELS Studio 3D premium audio system, along with LED fog lights. In the US, those power folding mirrors are actually on the advanced trim. Moving up to the top trim is where you'll find the head-up display, the second row temperature control, a surround view camera, and heated rear seats. So if you're looking for a larger vehicle in the compact class, this yeah. is certainly one of them. The back seat is very roomy, has a perfectly flat floor, mm -hmm. easy for kids tumbling in and out of the back seat, no problem there. Although it offers lots of space back there, the Cadillac XT5, the Lincoln Corsair, and the Buick Envision offer a little bit more legroom. Now also a big cargo space as yeah. well. Not just what you can see, but what's underneath the floor. There's a big trough there, and if you lift up the cargo thing even more, there's even more space in there, lots of room. Our carry-on and a cooler fit perfectly. I did a couple different configurations so you can see how much space you get. Overall cargo capacity, the RDX is the winner. Yay! Space behind the second row, it goes to the Cadillac XT5, but the RDX is pretty close. All right, it's that time oh, I get to... Not quite yet, Zach. I just wanted to mention the new color, the exterior color for 2022 is called the Liquid Carbon Metallic, if anyone is interested. I snuck a sip. Let's get at it. <laughs> time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Were you able to compare the ride quality with and without the adaptive damper? RDX really is amazing. We tried the Germans as well as a top trim CX-5. RDX makes so much sense for value. Totally right about the value. Well, you know what? This adaptive suspension is totally missing the boat at Acura. It's fantastic. Yeah. 
it does make a big difference. We've driven many RDX with and without, and they should make this an option on all trims for whatever yeah. it costs to just say, I want the adaptive suspension. Yeah, something like an a la carte item would be brilliant. If you could get this on the tech model, it would be so great. It makes a big difference. This is now available on the A Spectrum in Canada, just the top model, but in the US, you can get it on the Advance and Advanced A Spect. I always thought it was interesting that the most sporty trim never came with it, but Acura listened and well, they changed that. That's what I was harping on ever since this thing came out. It was yeah. ridiculous that the sporty looking one doesn't have it. At least now it does, but they should make it available on more trims. Where is the touch screen? Well, there is no touch screen in here. It's right we here, Andrea. <laughs> it's this little wee trackpad. That's your touch screen. Nope. You have to control it with the center console trackpad, as Zach said. I don't love this system. I find when I'm driving it, it, it's very distracting. I go over a bump. Sometimes it shifts to another area on the screen. It drives me crazy. One thing I just want to add, that home button has been <laughs> my godsend. lifesaver. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness for the home button. All right, so we have done RDX videos in the past. People who have these cars yep. say to us, oh, the push button thing isn't such a big deal for the transmission. Yeah, you can get used to anything. And the trackpad, it's not so bad. I've yep. come to uh, like it. You can get used to anything. We drive 100 different cars a year. <laughs> Take it from us. There are better systems than this, and Acura needs to address this and get rid of this and go to something better. We put out a lot of content each week on the Motormouth YouTube channel, and it's so easy to find. All you do is go to the YouTube search bar and type in the name of the channel, Motormouth, and then the brand you're looking for, in this case, Acura. Then all the videos and comparisons we've done will pop up. It's that easy. Just traded in my 2020 RDX for the 2022. Love the mid-cycle refresh exterior design. The A-Spec available on the top Platinum Elite trim is a game changer. Does Acura That's the one have, we have by the way? This is what we're in. Does Acura have any plans for a hybrid version like the Lexus NX? Well, that's a great question because we are talking about electrification so much. And Automotive News interviewed a top executive for Acura in the US. And they said, no, we are going straight to pure electric vehicles similar to what Genesis is doing. Now, the opposite with Honda, they're going to have hybrids. We know of the new CRV that's coming out, it will have a gas model option as well as a hybrid. And this is going to be a co developed platform with General Motors. They announced this a year or so ago Honda Corporation and General Motors sharing the Ultium platform that General Motors has developed. A huge amount of research and development has to go into making the batteries, the components. They can share it across several brands at GM and two brands at Honda. Very smart and Acura plans to release a full pure EV crossover in the 2024 model year. So that's pretty exciting. So this is a 2022 model year, the beginning of this year. So there you go. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? This is on my shopping list for the next time I buy. Question, consumer reports list it as below average customer satisfaction, measured, I believe, by people who would buy one again. Any insight on that or other measures of satisfaction worth looking at? All of the reviewers love how it drives. Now with quality and reliability, there's anecdotal stories that we hear, but also some studies that have come out. What's the first one? JD Power released its 2022 dependability study recently. And unfortunately, Honda and Acura didn't fare very well. Honda is in 24th place and Acura in 28th, along with Land Rover and Volvo and that's, Alfa Romeo. That's not, not good, good company. company. No. That's not good company. And the thing is that this is a brand that used to have a corner stone around quality yeah. and reliability just like Toyota and they've let that kind of fall off over the last few years uh, but you also have an Edmunds study right? Edmunds did some customer reviews of people who actually own these vehicles and in 2019 this new model came out and that's where it had a slew of problems with the engine the transmission forward collision warning the brakes now as time went on and the model got a little bit older we're now in 2022 and it has less problems. So we also hear from you 
Um, around Honda, for example, our neighbor down the road had an Odyssey with yeah. a slew of problems. They got rid of it. Uh, your brother's neighbor has this RDX by the 2021 model. It's been in for all kinds of repairs. Yeah. And then we did previous videos where people said, we have an RDX, we love it, we've got no issue with it. So as the years have gone on, it is improving, but many people will say, don't buy that first year that a model is released. And it kind of holds true to this RDX. All right, Andrea, let's get into it. There's a hot competition out there for your money. What else can you buy? For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Lexus NX350 with a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder, 275 horsepower and a starting price of just under $55,000. The Genesis GV70 with a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, 300 horsepower and a starting price of $49,500. The Volvo XC60 with the B5 powertrain, a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder with a 48 volt hybrid system, 247 horsepower and a starting price of just under $51,000. Here's our used car alternative from CanadaDrives.ca. We chose a 2019 Audi Q5 Technic with just under 55,000 kilometers for $48,990. Click on the tab or the link in the description below to find more vehicles in this category from CanadaDrives.ca. So there are four SUVs for you to consider. So what's the fuel economy? What's the warranty? Can this thing tow? Let's do our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The RDX front wheel drive model in the U.S. starts at just over $40,000. The all wheel drive model is just under $46,000 in Canada and just over $42,000 in the U.S. Our best value tech trim all wheel drive starts at just over $49,000 Canadian and just under $45,000 US. And the top trim that we're test driving is $58,000 Canadian and just over $52,000 in the US. JD Power gives the 2022 RDX a predicted reliability and quality score of 74 out of 100. Car Edge states the RDX will retain 51% of its value after five years. Here's the fuel economy, 11 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 8.6 on the highway. That's 22 miles per gallon city, 28 miles per gallon highway. There is a slight fuel penalty if you ordered the A-spec trim. Towing capacity is 1,500 pounds. The warranty is four years, 80,000 kilometers or 50,000 miles. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improve. I love the power and how sporty the handling is. And thank you, Acura, for adding the adaptive suspension to this A-Spec trim. What I'd like to see is a touch screen. And clean up this center <laughs> console. Frustrating. If you're looking for a spacious crossover, put this RDX on your list. You let us know. Do you still think this is the value leader? This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of to-your-door delivery and the confidence of a seven-day love-it-or-return-it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more.